how to use layers with timelines to create a vast number of different videos from basically the same source design. I'm going to create a quick selection there using the elliptical marquee tool and I'm going to fill it with a gradient. So a variety of different gradients available. I'm going to go with that one. I'm going with radial and I'm going to go with blend mode of difference. And you can apply it a couple of times to create a fairly unusual design. The source doesn't particularly matter. I've just wanted something to work with. So what you can then do is go to edit and copy and then edit menu and paste. Now you've got a layer. And you go to there, to the background and delete that in the layers panel. Find that in the window menu. And now you've just got a layer and you can move it around. What you can also do, of course, you can always convert it into a smart object. So go to a layer menu, smart objects and convert to smart object. So you've got a smart object and you can hold down the alter option key and duplicate. And you can do that multiple times. Create multiple copies of that design. Now it's not going to be the most amazing video, but of course you can add lots of variations. You can add styles into it and much more. So now I can just quickly duplicate that smart object. So I'm doing just filling the entire screen with that. And of course you can resize it and do all those sort of things, but you've still got that underlying source smart object still available, that gradient image. And you can change that later. So you've got all those designs there. Now select all of those objects. Click on the bottom and select them all. So now they're all selected. What you can do, you can turn those into a smart object. Layer menu and smart objects convert to smart object. And then you can go to the create video timeline. That's in the timeline panel. Click that. Find that timeline panel via the window menu. Timeline there. And of course, layers. And you can just move obviously through the timeline with the playhead there. And you can move it around. You can resize it. But also you can expand there, just expand that little expansion there and click that little stopwatch, transform. And now, of course, what you can do, you can add some keyframes to this. So I can just resize that a bit. You can see a keyframe there and you can just create keyframes at different points along that video playhead. Now, when you play it, you will see the change, the transformation will be applied with that design. So now if I just go backwards and forwards, you can see if I just move it, it will zoom in and rotate and likewise. And of course, you can create quite a bit of variation of that. I've just gone for a very, very basic transform. And of course, like I said, there's opacity also and styles. So you could change those as well to make it more interesting. What you can do, of course, you can duplicate that design, that layer. Don't have to just keep that layer. But you can also, of course, render the whole image. So you can go File and Export and Render Video. So it will just be rendered. I say a very basic video. But you can double click on that smart object thumbnail there in the Layers panel. And it will open up the document. And you'll see all of the individual smart objects. And there you go back, right back to the source by clicking all the way through. And what you can do, you can modify the original source design. Maybe decrease its size. Press return there. Maybe apply a filter or two. Maybe liquefy. So you can distort it. that squeeze it a bit 
just like that. And also what you can do, you can always go to the image menu and increase the file size. So you also add a style if you want. So layer menu, layer style, maybe add a bevel. Go to drop shadow. Change that because it's a bit going off. The, you want to avoid going off the edge of the document. So just change the various settings there, past the size, etc. So it's not going over the edge. Just will create a horrible cut in the image. So once you've once you're happy with your design, of course you could apply a style to it as well via the styles panel. So like I say, image menu, image size, you could increase the size of that. It's obviously fairly small. I mean, it's only 509, so you can make it 800. Make it a bit bigger than that. Click OK. And then resize that design. It's still just keep editing it, modifying it. You can duplicate that design. Hold down the Alter Option key to duplicate it. Make multiple copies. Now, you, what you can do with those, of course, each of those copies you could maybe recolor, resize, apply transformations, rotate. So you go image menu adjustments, maybe hue and saturation. Just change the color, make it more green, maybe more purple and green, whatever. Click OK. So you get it something different from the the other objects in there. Also, you can go maybe to adjustments and vibrance or color lookup. Click OK or press return. You can modify each of those individual objects. With each object, you can also apply different smart filters. You can add liquefy to one, maybe oil paint to another, distort and wave to another. You can also resize it. You can continue to work on those different objects in many different ways to create all kinds of really unique designs. Now you can close that. So then close and save. And you can see all of those changes are now reflected in that design. Makes it a lot more dense as well. It looks more dense there. Close that. Then it does take a few seconds to close it all. So it'll be a bit of a thing. But also before you close that one, that's the obviously the intermediary point, you can change things in there. You can apply effects in there, move things around, make certain again it doesn't go over the side. I've noticed some of the ones down the bottom, whatever, and then the edge goes over the edge. So I like to avoid going over edges. So just shift them around. And again, once you've done that, what you can do, you can resize things. You can apply colors to it. You can also hold down the alter option key and duplicate that design. Scale it. You can create a very, and of course what you can do, you can also add additional objects to this as well. You could add maybe a smart object to this as well. So you don't have to keep that design per site. You can select obviously multiple entries there, and you could go to the filter menu and apply effects. But if you go to the filter menu at this point, you'll see you can't do anything. For some weird reason, it doesn't allow you to do that. You have to go first to maybe like smart object in the layer menu and convert to a smart object, and then go to the filter menu and apply. Say liquefy, you could apply liquefy to that. Or maybe a blur, Gaussian blur. Click OK. Now, when you exit out of this, when you close it, save the document, that will be reflected in the final result. So you can make a whole loads of changes. Again, image menu, hue and saturation, maybe color. But you could use color lookup. 
etc. Click OK. Now you've got a fairly colourful design, very dense design there. You can close it. Again, remember to save. It takes a few seconds to do that. Depends on the objects. And now that's updated there. Now quite a lot of it is off, off, probably off the screen. You can now see you've got a completely different design and you can move the playhead backwards and forwards and you can see all the changes, all the various video effects are still there. All the transformations are still there, but applied now with that new design. And of course, you, at any point, you could go back in again using the smart objects. Just double click again on the smart objects and repeat. Just go in, in just and edit it again. You can also go to layer menu and duplicate layer. So you can duplicate that layer, click OK, or hold down the order option key. And you can move that around. And that will, again, can be used with that video timeline. And you can fill the entire screen, resize things, maybe apply warps, go to edit menu and transform and warp. Or maybe just scale it using the bounding box. Maybe apply effects to that bit. Maybe oil paint, something like that. And of course you can tweak the various keyframes as well, if you wish, for each of those layers. They're all independent now. So you can tweak those as well. So once you've filled your screen again, what you can do, again, go over to the there and you can use that timeline, move backwards and forwards and it they will all change and you can see the whole thing. Now, obviously it's going to be fairly slow. It doesn't do it smoothly when it's uh, when there's a lot of information on there. You can see it changing, sort of moving backwards and forwards. And again, like I say, you can change the transform. You can also go and tweak the styles. You can go and change some of the bits there of the keyframes. Maybe add a change there. And that will be different from the other ones then. So I can resize it. Now as soon as I resize it, or rotate it. Down. Up there, press return, and another keyframe is added. And that will be taken into account as it goes around the, the video head. So a vast number of amazing video effects and video designs can be created simply by using a very basic start point. And of course, once you've done that, what you can do, file menu, export, and render video. And any point, of course, again, you can always go to the Smart Object thumbnail, double click on it, double click all the way back to the source and change the source design. Hope you found this tutorial of interest. Please subscribe to the Graphic Extra channel. Always add any tutorials about Photoshop, Illustrator and many others. Please add some comments. Always appreciated. Dislike or like. Thank you much.